Hello, this is Paul here, and I'm going to do some stuff in Blender real quick. And basically, it's an answer to uh, modeling a tool stand double weave rope. And I found that the weave was what I'd call like it's not quite the hound's tooth, but it is the weave pattern of it. It's not the color pattern, but the weave pattern. But you wrap it on itself to make the rope strand, and then you just extend it out. So I'll cover uh, how I got the weave pattern, but the rest is just uh, using the modifier stack in Blender. So <laughs> I'll try to make this quick. When I get into it, I probably won't be saying too much. Uh, hold on a sec. I'm going to turn on the, the actions or the, not the actions, but the, what do you call it? The screen capture, screen recorder. Screen. Okay, I got it back on there. And screencast keys. That's what I meant. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't do too many recordings like this much anymore because I don't have time where the TV isn't blaring in the background because I live with family. So I can't really do good videos or I just have to do them quiet. So I'm just trying to explain what I'm doing here. So I just uh, add a mesh, which is a plane, and I just work from there. And I know for the weave pattern, I am going to need a section like this and it's not too hard to do so just duplicate it, rotate it 90 oops <laughs> ah, I have to duplicate like so and then uh, just kind of eyeball the spacing Not exactly perfect, but I uh, go something like that. It's not on the same plane, dang it. <laughs> now it is okay. Something like that. And then to get the spacing, all I do is join these like so. Or actually, what I do is I use the uh, snapping here. So, uh, vertex. And I want it active. There we go. So. And that way it lines up there. When I get that in alignment, I create a temporary edge and I use that as my measuring stick. So, yeah. <laughs> it's screwed, but it works. This is like something you figure out when crafting and you do like stuff with paper or even with like textile crafts, you just take a scrap material and you use it for a measuring stick. Well, it works in 3D graphics too. You don't have to always have it perfect. So, and it's like that. And I get an area where I get the weave pattern going. I might have to revise this a little bit more too, so bear with me if I have to do it. And So I get a pattern like this going and let's see how I do this. Okay. And 
I use the repeat function that Let's see in here. Because I am duplicating, I need it. And then you just hit the shift R to repeat, and that repeats the pattern. And so I have that. Basically, I build up the weed pattern and I cut it down. <laughs> I know it's not the most organized method, but it still works. I'm not quite in alignment there. Ow. see notice I have my spacing off but I did it before and I do I had to correct it because <laughs> this here hold on this here is supposed to line up with this down there so what I got to do is change my offset on all of these to get them or <laughs> so Remember that little measuring stick thing I made? Uh, so what I have to do is this Basically, I get all these lined up. I have to change the spacing in between them, and I make a new measuring stick because I gotta line these up so that they're straight in line. Hold on a bit. I'm gonna pause because you know it's just gonna be busy work. <laughs> I'm gonna spend half an hour watching that. No, I don't think so. So I'm gonna pause it, and I'll get it in the line. But just to let you know those two tricks with the snapping and the little piece for measuring let you uh, get that set up because I didn't really have any numbers in mind I just did it <laughs> and then I'll show you the rest okay so I have the pattern or the start of the weave pattern and as you can see I actually had to resize little brick like pieces or the weave sections and then what I gotta do now is I told you it takes a while to correct this and I select everything and duplicate on the Z axis that's what I'm doing. Uh, 
minutes because I didn't have the key held down. All right. Shifty. Then Z. All right. So I'm duplicating on the Z axis now. And what I'm going to do is shift it on the Y axis. So this other layer is going to be the lower tier. So G and the Y and there. So now it's like that. And I just bring this back up on the Z. It's tightly spaced like so. And then what I do is I start bridging these areas here. So it goes below and over. It's just like a lot of busy work. I missed an oil for that section. Oh. And let's keep doing that. For more, but I'm going to pause it so you don't have to watch me doing the same thing 20 times. <laughs> That's the idea, and I'll come back after I get this together. So after connecting those, I get strips like this, and probably overdid it because I'm going to end up cutting a lot of this off. But here you go, you got uh, strips like this, and I'm going to start putting on more materials. I'm just gonna make four different colors. First time I did it around, I did it with eight colors, but I found out that because I'm just using like a little four by four grid, I only need four materials. So, so yeah, that one. I'm just doing this in a blender internal because I'm not worried about textures and stuff. That's with that layer. The strip I'll make red. Generally, because the way this is going to cut, it's going to be alternating. So, so now there's this weave. <laughs> and then what I do is I take everything and rotate it on the axis 45 degrees. And I know I don't have this quite lined up like I did when I originally did it, so I don't know if it's going to work. Because when the first time I did it, I still had it lined up much better. So, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to explain, but you can see some of these are off. I don't know why. But anyhow, what I did is I took a 4x4 four four section. So I knew it would line up. So, looking at on top ortho, I basically did a knife cut, which would be from this vertex. Here. So, and so, and 
and for whatever reason it's not wanting to get in that corner. Probably because they're not lined up like I had it last time. Yeah, that's a problem. like that so I'd get like a little section of a mesh that would happen the tile so that tiles are should <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just a matter of getting rid of all this stuff Once you have a little section that tiles into the weave, it's just a matter of doing the modifiers with the curves and the arrays to get your rope. So, see, I don't have it lined up too perfect. If I did, it would snap together like I did on the original one. So, this should be like flush. I don't know why it's not. Well, the blend file I had available for download was flush, so I don't know. Maybe it's a vertex or something. It's just not lined up. Yeah. Oh, dude, I see it now. It's probably up. A little bit better. There's still something that's just like a hair off on this one, but if you get it right, everything will line up. You won't have that yet. And then you just build the rest like I did. You have an array of three of these and it should make uh, six going the one way and six strands going the other way. And can this the part of one? That yeah, looks like I accidentally deleted an edge or something. So, down there. So that should be a section. Oh, one more thing I forgot to do is uh, Control, you know, shift G. And I should have done that before I cut it up because all these are supposed to be subdivided to add the right density. So you want to do that too. <laughs> before you chop it up, uh, you want to make sure the density is enough so it will wrap. You get the idea, it's just to make the weave. And from there, you put it on a curve, and it goes around the curve, full on itself, and you extend out another array in a path. And that's in the blend files, so all you gotta do is look at that. But to make the mesh, that's all you have to do to make 